Well, up, y'all? It's Moments to Downtown Ray Mel, and you're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Monday, August 17th, 2020, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash Entertainment Report with Ray Mel, that's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O, on Twitter at The Enter Report, or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com, the yeah, iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. I hope everyone had a fantastic weekend. Netflix Espionage Thriller, The Gray Man, starring Chris Evans and Ryan Gosling, has received a $20 million production tax credit to film in California. The California Film Commission selected nine films in total, including The Gray Man, to receive $50 million collectively. The Gray Man leads the pack with $20 million. An untitled Jordan Peele project received $8.4 million. The sci-fi thriller Invasion starring Octavia Spencer received $2.5 million. The drama Losing Clementine starring Jessica Chastain received $2.3 million. And the NBA drama Sweetwater received $1.4 million, among other film projects. The nine films are expected to generate $284 million in qualified in-state expenditures. The projects are estimated to employ 1,340 crew members, 342 cast members, and 14,397 background actors and stand-ins over a combined 374 production dates. All nine films are expected to start production by early next year. Film productions worldwide have been affected this year due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The Gray Man, based on author Michael Greening's series of novels, is being helmed by Avengers Endgame directors Joe and Anthony Russo. The Russo's uh, company, um, A.G. Boat, is producing The Gray Man. Gosling will star as a former CIA operative who becomes a killer for hire. Evan stars as Gosling's former colleague who is tracking him down. Netflix is giving a glimpse of the new film, Enola Holmes. The streaming service shared a trailer for the movie Monday featuring Millie Bobby Brown as the title character, Enola Holmes. The teaser introduced Brown as Enola, the sister of Detective Sherlock Holmes, played by Henry Cavill, and Mycroft Holmes, played by Sam Clapkin. Helena Bottom Carter co-stars as the sibling's mother, Eodoria Holmes. Netflix also shared a premiere date for the movie, September 23rd, in Co. Enola Holmes is based on the Nancy Springer book series of the same name. The series consists of six books, the first of which, The Case of the Missing Marquess, was published in 2006. The new film centers on Enola, a gifted sleuth in her own right. Enola runs away to London to find her mother, who has mysteriously gone missing. The official synopsis reads, Meeting a cast of memorable characters along the way, Enola is caught in the middle of a conspiracy that alters the course of political history. Enola Holmes is written by Jack Thorne and directed by Henry Badbeer. Brown will be producing with Paige Brown, Mary Perrin, Alex Garcia, and Ali Mendes. Brown is known for playing set 11 on the Netflix series Stranger Things. Cow portrays Geralt of Rivia in Netflix's series adaptation of The Witcher. Elizabeth Debicki has confirmed she signed on to play the Britain's Princess Diana in season 5 and 6 of The Crown on Netflix. Uh, an official uh, uh, tweet from the show's Twitter account says on Sunday, um, from a statement from the actress, Princess Diana's spirit, her words, and her live act- her actions live in the hearts of so many. It's my true privilege and honor to be joining this masterful series, which has had me absolutely hooked from episode one. The Bicky is known for her roles in The Great Gatsby, The Night Manager, and The Cloverfield Paradox. She'll soon be seen in the film Tenet. Season five of The Crown will feature Imelda Stoughton as Queen Elizabeth II, Jonathan Price as Prince Philip, and Leslie Manville as Princess Margaret. The shows about the royal family will end with its sixth season. The real Princess Diana died in a Paris car crash in 1997. This Is Us creator Dan Fogelman said on Twitter that the family drama will address the COVID-19 pandemic in season five. Fogelman made the comments on Sunday in response to a fan question about the fifth season. Fogelman tweeted, yes, on covid we decide to attack things head on. Very proud of This Is Us writers. The creator also know that he is not sure when production of season five will air or start or when the new episodes will air. He continues, same plan ending, same route to get there. In response to the fan asking if the show's plan ending will remain in light of the pandemic. 
This is thus ended its fourth season in March. Production on season five was halted due to the COVID-19 pandemic. NBC has renewed the show through season six. Sterling K. Brown, Mila Ventimiglia, Mandy Moore, Justin Hartley, and Chrissy Metz starred in the series, which follows the Pearson family in the past and present. The Gift Season 2 is coming to Netflix in September. The streaming service shared a premiere date, September 10th, for the season in a video Monday. The teaser shows grains of sand coming together to form the mysterious symbol Ahram, played by Mehmet Gunsor in Season 1. Netflix said, There are more unrevealing truths beyond everything you know. Hashtag The Gift Season 2 will only be on Netflix September 10th. The Gift is Netflix's second Turkish original series. The drama fantasy series follows Ati, played by Varan Sat, an artist who has been obsessed with the mysterious symbol all of her life. The symbol is then discovered at an archaeological site. The gift is based on the single Boyas novel Duyana Algulsi. The show co-stars Matan Aldolger and Melissa Sinelson. Netflix's first Turkish original series, The Protector, ended in July after four seasons. Netflix canceled production on a new Turkish original, if only the same month after producers were refused of film licensing because of the show's inclusion of a gay character. Television personality Chrissy Teigen said on Twitter she didn't uh, know she was pregnant with her third child when she underwent breast reduction surgery a few months ago. Teigen told a fan who asked about the timing of her operation on Twitter, I did the routine pregnancy test you, did be, you do before surgery. It said negative. It was not. It was not negative. Um, a few weeks after surgery, I took a test, and for many years now, I've taken pregnancy tests almost every month, praying to see a positive one day. Just wishful thinking. I never had a positive before. Tegan admitted she was immediately nervous, knowing it was risky to have undergone elective surgery to remove her breast implants while pregnant. She tweeted, "So we prayed to the boob surgeon gods that everything would be okay." Went to every appointment terrified. Even without the surgery, I didn't think I could get pregnant naturally anyway. So the odds just felt bad. But what they said so often can be true. When you give up on trying, life has a surprising way of, of, of uh, throwing you off. In summary, my boobs hurt. Tegan and, and singer John Legend married in 2013. How the parents of four-year-old Luna and two-year-old Miles, who were born after the couple used IVF therapy. They announced Tegan's latest pregnancy and Legends' wild music video last week. The actor and producer Ash Christian has died in his sleep while on vacation in Mexico. He was 35. Variety and Deadline reported Christian's Thursday's death on Saturday, but did not specify the cause of it. Fat Girls, a movie he wrote, directed, and starred in, premiered at the 2006 Tribeca Film Festival. Texas Native won a Daytime Emmy Award for Outstanding Special Class Short Format Daytime Program for 2000, in 2014 for producing Me Promise. Through his company, Cranium Entertainment, Christian produced the films 1985, Hurricane Bianca, Burn, Social Animals, and Coyote Lake. He is also was a producer on Broadway's Next to Normal. Christian's acting credits include The Good Fight, The Good Wife, and Law and & Order. Uh, his friend and producing partner, Ann Clements, says Ash was a great friend, colleague, and partner in crime. He was a champion of indie films and filmmakers, and his love of the process of putting movies together was infectious. Our goes out to his family, especially his mother. The world lost one of the good ones. Actor and producer Anthony Anderson um, has been honored with the star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Anderson wrote on Instagram Friday, Today was a great day. Dreams do come true. Those dreams are made possible through faith, hard work, patience, and sacrifice. I want to thank everyone that has been part of my journey thus far. Tighten your seatbelts because we are about to take a wild ride. Thank you to my family, friends, and fans for this just as much as yours as is mine. Anderson is best known for the starring in and producing the ABC sitcom Blackish. He also appeared in the TV shows Hang Time, Law and & Order, and The Shield. His film credits include Liberty Heights, Kangaroo Jack, Hustle and & Flow, and The Depart. He's also uh, to host the game show To Tell the Truth. Anderson is set to guest host Jimmy Kimmel Live on Thursday. The 
Billboard Music Awards announced a new date for their 2020 awards show on Friday. The 2020 Billboard Music Awards will air October 14th at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on NBC, according to Billboard's website. The awards were originally scheduled for April 29th. They had postponed due to the precautions over the COVID-19 pandemic. Billboard confirmed that Kelly Clarkson will still host the Billboard Music Awards. It will be the singer's third year in a row hosting the show. Clarkson shared her own um, announcement on Instagram Friday. Clarkson wrote, the BBMAs are set for October 14, 2020, and I'll be hosting for the third time. Mark your calendars and don't forget to tune in on NBC. Hashtag BBMAs. Award shows have adapted to the COVID-19 pandemic in different ways. The BET Awards held a remote ceremony by Zoom. The Emmys plan to have a similar remote ceremony. The MTV Video Music Awards have opted from an outdoor ceremony with little or no audience in attendance. The board did not announce how they plan to conduct the October 14th ceremony. Pop star Taylor Swift's Folklore is the number one album in the United States for a second consecutive week. Coming in number two on the Billboard 200 charts day at Saturday is Pop Smoke's Shoot for the Stars, Aim for the Moon, followed by Juice World's Legends Never Die, number three, the cast album of Broadway's Hamilton, number four, and Little Baby's My Turn, number five. Right at the top tier are The Baby's Blame It on the Baby, and number six, Harry Styles' Fine Line, number seven, Gunna Wana's at number eight, Post Malone's Hollywood's Bleeding, number nine, and Lion King, the GIF soundtrack at number 10. And finally, the SpongeBob movie, Sponge on the Run, is the number one movie in North America this weekend, BoxOfficeMojo.com said on Sunday. The animated adventure, which will be available to stream on demand in early 2021, earned $900,000 for receipts recorded at 300 theaters. Coming in at number two is The Tax Collector with $204,000 in 138 theaters, followed by The Rental, number three, with $78,000 in 14 theaters, The Big Ugly at number four with $24,000 in 14 theaters, and Made in Italy with $21,000 in 101 theaters. Rounding up the top tier are The Burnt Orange Hersey at number six with $15,000 in 84 theaters, and Sputnik at, with $12,000 in 32 theaters. The Tax Collector was the number one movie last week with $317,000 in receipts. The release of most major films have been canceled or delayed in recent months, with many including um, Greyhound, The Secret, Bill and Ted Face the Music, and Mulan, uh, bypass theaters in favor of video on demand and streaming platforms. On March 8th, before theaters were shuttered in keeping with social distancing practices meant to slow down the spread of the coronavirus, the North American box office was taking in about $100 million. Onward and the Invisible Man were the big hits at the time, and both made quick play-per-view debuts when the theater closed. And as you get to tell report for Monday, uh, August 17th, 2020. I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Marie Mello. I'll be back tomorrow to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Facebook.com slash The Entertainment Report with Ray Mello. That's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O. On Twitter at The Answer Report or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of The Entertainment Report anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com the iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainer Report, and they'll take you to the page. Good night, and God bless you all.